large BGP communities. Um, over the, since this summer, I've been spending a lot of time in uh, ITF circles to fix a very annoying problem. As you can see, I've uh, changed into my ITF attire. <laughs> um, It is mandatory, otherwise they won't allow you into the room. Uh, age is also an issue, they were like, no, no, come back when you're 30. Uh, now, the ITF is, is somewhat challenging, uh, especially because, in my opinion, operators are severely underrepresented there. Uh, this is in part because we operators, you and I, are literally paid to do real work. We are not paid to, to you know, dream up nice things and, and document that in lengthy documents. But I do believe, on the other hand, that standardization is extremely important. Because without a body like ITF, I don't know how we can have your computer talk to my computer. I literally do not know a solution to that. So there is a real tension, I would say, between people using protocols and, and people designing them, because the overlap is only so small. BGP communities. What all of us use today uh, is called RFC 1997. Uh, on the lowest line, you can see an example. These BGP communities indicate, for instance, where NTT picked up the route, what kind of uh, 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 relation we have with that ASN, uh, what city it is, what uh, continent it is. And these communities are used in our routing policy to decide who we propagate what to or what uh, manipulations of the attributes we should do, such as uh, ramp up the local pref or lower it in specific regions. And this is called opaque, because these communities only have meaning to NTT, and NTT is supposed to document what these communities do. A community is constructed of a 32-bit value, and the convention is that the first 16 bits contain your global autonomous system number, the one that is assigned to you by an RIR. The latter 16 bits are yours. This is called the local administrator. Uh, it basically means local data. Uh, and it is entirely up to you what you put uh, in that field. And a very common design pattern is that people use autonomous system number literals in BGP communities. And this is because for humans, when you speak to each other over the phone or uh, email each other, it's rather convenient if you can put, for instance, level freeze or Telia's uh, ASN straight into the BGP community to trigger some functionality. So this is a screenshot from our uh, uh, routing policy overview, where you, for instance, see the pattern that if you send us 65400 colon and then the ASM of uh, a peer of ours that will trigger certain actions in certain geographical regions. And the majority of IP networks have strategies like this available to their customers. And I think this also starts to highlight what the issue is. Because you can't fit 32-bit in a 16-bit field. So this ruins the whole experience for 4-byte ASN operators. And this is ridiculous in my opinion, because one out of five ASNs in the default free zone is a four byte ASN. And all those networks are denied uh, their own namespace because you cannot put your ASN in the first 16 bits. It doesn't fit. And it is incredible to me that the ITF has not resolved uh, uh, this issue in 2016. Four-byte ASNs have been around for a long, long time. Another issue for two-byte ASN operators, such as myself, is that we cannot target four-byte ASNs. In this slide, we see that we literally use the value of uh, the peers ASN as part of the BGP community, and the implication is that NTT is not able to have a proper peering relation with 4-byte ASNs. 
That is a very serious operational issue if you cannot turn up BGP sessions without creating invalid configuration and invalid packets uh, should the configuration be accepted. So looking back at what has been done so far in the IETF. Uh, in 2002, there was an effort uh, started, it was called Flexible BHP Communities. Uh, it was a very interesting idea where uh, you could use BHP Communities that were of flexible length, uh, and you could use them to target certain classes of BHP pairs, and it was truly fascinating technology. Uh, but it was somewhat complicated, uh, and it never really picked up steam, uh, and the drafts expired. Another interesting effort uh, is uh, to uh, reuse some of uh, the extended communities. But the extended communities are not really big. And you can choose that you, you have six bytes to play with. So it kind of means that if you use the four, first four bytes to put the peers ASN in, that only leaves 16 bytes of uh, uh, stuff to, to play with and 16 bits is not enough to describe the network actions that most operators have. Then in 2010, uh, another interesting effort started, white BGP communities. White communities, again, were a variant that was uh, flexible in length. Uh, it described a, a structure uh, in which you can encode all kinds of data types natively into the BGP community. So you could put an ASN in there, plus an IP address, plus a MAC address, plus a UTF-8 string, uh, they went all out. They were like, nothing is crazy enough. We'll put it all in the draft. <laughs> this has resulted, unfortunately, in a situation where the ITF IDR working group does have a document on which some work is being done, but nobody so far has implemented this. And it takes me at least 12 months to refresh the software in the entire network uh, so if you can imagine that that draft is still being worked on, we're looking at years and years uh, before we have something that we operators can use. So somewhat in a, a fit of anger, uh, operators got together and we said, enough is enough, we'll uh, try and uh, gem our own idea through this, and that is large BGP communities. A draft is being submitted, the draft is pretty short, um, in essence, what it provides us with is uh, 12 bytes. The first four bytes are your autonomous system number, be it two byte or four byte, doesn't matter. Four bytes are enough to store that. And what follows is eight bytes uh, that are for you to use, and those eight bytes have a meaning in your autonomous system number. This provides us with a unique namespace per ASM. No longer we will collide with each other. No longer we have to put private ASNs into the global administrator bit. Um, with eight bytes for us as operators, we have enough room to target a four byte ASN and put in a action code. These uh, communities, I think, are also relatively easy to remember. The notation is very similar to what we're already used to. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger. So what does this uh, effort look like at the moment? XABGP supports the attribute so far. Uh, it's uh, unfair to compare XABGP with uh, something like Cisco or Juniper, but it is very useful for interrupt testing. So the first open source implementation uh, is now available. You can download that and start testing against it. Cisco has also committed to this effort, which is fantastic news because in the ITF IDR, working group, your drafts are worthless without implementations. And having such a big name on the list, even as an engineering release, is very cool. Uh, Matt has been working on a patch for BERT. It's half finished. Maybe in a few weeks we'll be able to release that as well, uh, which brings us to free implementations. OpenBGPD also has ha uh, received half a patch uh, that should they are targeting November 2016. Um, Nokia has uh, made commitments to uh, implement this uh, method. Uh, and we are tracking all these implementations on the large BGP communities website. 
The current state of this draft is it has been submitted to the IDR working group uh, with the request that the document is adopted. And that means uh, people chime in, should the working group be working on this document or do we think the, the, the idea is idiotic and, and throw it out? Uh, so far, the, the feedback has been very positive. Uh, on one side, there's 30 internet operators that are like, uh, implement this yesterday. And on the other side, there are uh, a very small group of people that have ideological uh, reasonings uh, that kind of obstruct the effort at this moment. So we have yet to see what will come out of this effort, but I have uh, good hope because our needs as operators are dire at this moment. I cannot turn up PGP peering sessions with 4-byte ASNs, and if you have received a 4-byte ASN from the RER, I strongly recommend you to go back to RIPE and tell them I want the smaller version because from an operational perspective, this is not ideal. And because of this urgency, I really hope that the IETF uh, shows its best side. Now, what can you do? You in this room, you purchase equipment from vendors like Juniper, like Cisco, like Brocade, Nokia. Maybe you use open source uh, routing software like Vios or Guaga or Bird or Zebra. I urge you, reach out to your account managers or on the GitHub pages and file issues. Point them to this effort and tell them, look, three years from now, I'm going to go through a technology refresh and I'll upgrade the network. If you want to be on the short list of possible suppliers, you have to start working on implementing large BGP communities. And maybe that pressure isn't even needed. You just tell them like, hey, this looks really cool. This is uh, addressing my today's problems. Uh, so if you guys implement that, that would be really awesome. I think if enough voices are um, uh, raised, uh, the, the vendors can uh, work as a sort of aggregator or a proxy, and on our behalf in the ITF, they will continue the work on large PGP communities uh, where they, in theory, should represent us operators. So this is your to-do item for tomorrow morning. <laughs> Email your vendor, tell them, I like this effort, please implement it. That's all you need to do. Open that conversation with your account manager and tell them what you want. Um, that's it. Are there any questions? Maybe instead of uh, Bastian Spandau, Leesweb, maybe instead of emailing them tomorrow morning, email them this evening after the drinks. Yes. A bit more <laughs> energy in the, in the text. Uh, Niels Raier speaking as myself. Um, did you implement this as a new BGP capability or something? What will a router do if it doesn't support this and it receives a big community? A large community. Large, sorry. I like large community. I was trying to avoid the word wide. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, and that, that is what a lot of discussion in the IDR mailing list is about, whether a new path attribute should be uh, spent on, on this. Uh, there are, at this moment, 255 possible path attributes, and we are burning through them at a pretty slow rate. So there's no immediate concern, but it is a finite resource. Fortunately enough, there are many ways to expand the path attribute space, and we can always take the last attribute and just say, well, whatever comes after this is the real attribute. So we can basically, like printing money, we can always create more. <laughs> but there are uh, some that argue any coloring mechanism, because a community is basically adding a sort of color or a label to a prefix. Uh, and all of those should be grouped under a single attribute, and then the, the world is perfect. But I would argue done is better than perfect. This is something that is extremely easy to implement. It is almost inexcusable if you do not implement this uh, from a complexity perspective. So we should burn the attribute uh, and go with this. About the transitivity, 
This is what is called a transitive optional attribute. This means that uh, equipment that does not recognize the, the, the path attribute will just pass it along. Um, just like 2009, I believe, when Ripe and the university <laughs> did some tests. And hey, it was a legal attribute. <laughs> I, I know. I had two Ceresis that died and killed all IBGP southbound. So, uh, but uh, no worries. This, <laughs> this is worried. a, uh, no, the, you know, bugs happen. And I think the, the risk with uh, complex proposals like white communities or, or flexible communities back in the day uh, from my perspective, they, they pose even bigger risks because it is more complicated to do anything with it. Um, and, and downtime is horrible. Your business suffered that day because some nonprofit had a sort of academic exercise. On the other hand, um, this hard failure mode it does create an environment in which stuff will immediately be fixed. So if it does introduce issues, I'm confident that within 12 hours we've bitten through the sour apple. And we need to because we're literally we're running out of two byte ASNs. IANA gave their last uh, snippet of two byte ASN space, uh, gave it away a, a few weeks ago. So the pool is being depleted. The RERs are scraping the bottom uh, of the barrel for uh, two-byte ASNs, so we, we need to move. Okay, uh, Jan George speaking as individual, random Jan from the internet with, without any hat. Because um, before I joined the Internet Society, I, I went through this process in the ITF of, of writing an RFC and standardizing it and, and, and all this stuff. And I can, I can clearly feel your pain, right? Um, the problem is that, you know, ITF always says uh, rough consensus and running code, right? That's, that's what, what ITF believes in. And then you go to vendors and say, hey, can you uh, implement something even as, as, as a prototype so we have a running code so we can go back to the ITF and say, look, this, RF, this draft um, uh, works, we, we have something. But then you come to the vendors and they go like, uh, we don't implement drafts. Yeah, Microtech is an example. They just close the door, no drafts. So you need to, you need to what, what you need to focus in is a really, really good um, trick or process to talk to vendors and make them, I don't know, beg them or something, please implement at least something to break this magic catch-22 circle. And I think this is a great idea. We, we Absolutely, we need it. But uh, yeah, you need to be really, really careful with, with the vendors and go like, please, Please implement this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marcus AS286. Um, as owners of a 32-bit ASN, you really do because you have the clash with the namespace. Um, as a 13-bit operator, and as you do also use RFC first ASN number for your action, you just do, you just still have some space in bits you could use to map the current used or assigned 30-bit ASNs to some of the RFC space. Um, so there's a workaround for implementing prepending and stuff like that to 30-bit to ASNs. Um, however, that's not my point. My point is the question on the action. Um, there's recently the uh, it's still a draft, but uh, people try to push it uh, the standardization of the black hole community as. Uh, yeah, defined, well-defined action. Are there any plans or ideas around already to define a well-known set of actions in the local bond field to make it easier for all operators to know what they have to announce to others to eventually cause some action on their network? That is a very interesting question because in essence you're touching upon the debate between structured versus opaque. And because I didn't know what opaque meant. I'll give another example. This is an opaque approach. 
We document what values mean in our network, and then you use those values. Where it is structured, instead of using, say, 65400 colon, imagine there's a magic community, let's call them white communities. You could say, prepend towards this ASM that follows. And then what follows is uh, one of our peering partners. And I think that at this point in time, having 20 years, or, or whenever RFC 1997 came out uh, of experience with an opaque approach, uh, we should be very careful to consider where they're switching to a structured approach is helpful because it is truly new technology. And we would need to fly around the world and retrain every operator to use that new structured approach. But if we stick with an opaque approach, we can just fly around the world and have much shorter talks and say, add a colon and a number and it's large. I would prefer a technology that is easy to explain uh, over a beer in say 10 minutes and that the next morning you can still somewhat remember how it works. Um, the moment you try and, and put routing policy into the communities, I also face another challenge. Uh, by using the opaque approach, I have 100% control over my network because each community uh, is defined by myself. I've documented that internally. It's what generates the configs. That's what's pushed out to the devices. Should there be a structured approach, I might unwillingly be opening up uh, all kinds of features to BGP partners which do not pay for those features because my network element doesn't require explicit config to honor the community, out of the box it would do certain actions like prepend or lower local pref or uh, uh, things like that. So um, I, I would argue that this approach is whitelisting what is allowed and if there's a structured approach I would have to go the other way and blacklist uh, a lot of stuff. And I know for sure that the structured approach will never meet 100% of my requirements. So I will always need a opaque approach next to the structured approach, and I would have to run both, which makes the training of network operators even harder. So I would argue, because we can uh, uh, meet our immediate requirements with 100% opaque approach, we should stick to that, and a structured approach will need an opaque approach as backup anyway, and then we're stuck with two technologies, which is not good for anyone. Um, so that's, that's my, my take on this. Oh, it's open to everyone. Um, hi, Sander Stefan. Um, I think we just need uh, uh, to, to be blunt here. We, we got rough consensus from the people who actually need to run these networks. We have running code. You've shown several uh, examples. The ITF just needs to move on this one. I mean, we have running code. We, uh, 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 we, we have rough consensus from the people who are actually running the networks. Um, it's insane that it, stuff like this can't move forward. I fully agree. Hi. I might be missing something, but we have structured and opaque now already, right? No export? Um, no export is not structured. It's a well-known opaque, in essence. But yeah, you could... <laughs> <laughs> no, this is true. And, and, uh, but we need much more than no export. The list basically is endless. Uh, our plan is not to deprecate RFC 1997. Uh, that will be around for another 20 years. Our plan is not to... Uh, do well-knowns in large, those can be done in uh, uh, the, the RFC 1997 communities. Um, so it's a pretty small change. A lot of it will stay the same as, as it is today from that perspective. All right. Thank you for your time.